with you and joining us right now. Head baseball coach at Mississippi State, Chris Limonis. On the Farm Bureau phone line, check out favorites.com and go with the home team. Coach, last time we talked to you, you weren't exactly pleased with the way your team played against Missouri. I'm sure it's safe to say that you're pretty satisfied with how they bounced back, right? Yeah, and we spoke about it last week. Our group is, um, we have a real resilient group, and you have to be if you're going to play in the SEC. And they, they came back out and had a great week of baseball. Coach, obviously you've coached a lot of great players through, through the years, but Tanner Allen today named SEC Player of the Year. He also wins the Ferris Trophy uh, for the best player in the state of Mississippi. I don't want you to put together a top five or anything like that, but you know, where do you rank Tanner among the great players that you've coached? Man, he's at the top. I mean, and he is a uh, he's a different bird, man. He's been fun to coach. Um, he brings it every day, and we all know he's a great player. But um, you know, a lot of times players, you know, it, it feels like Tanner found the perfect program in Mississippi State. I mean, he is the epitome of a Mississippi State Bulldog, and just you know, on and off the field and. His performance, uh, not just this year, but, you know, in 19 also, he just, you know, he's one of the better players in the country. And um, I'm really proud of him because he had some decisions to make this time last year and going into the draft and had the injury. And, you know, everybody told him he's too old, he's this, he's that. And, you know, Tanner just bet on himself. But I'm going to come back, I'm going to have a great year, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead this team, and I'm also going to give my, myself a better chance in professional baseball. And I think he's done all those things. I thought that this weekend you might have gotten the best performances of the year out of, out of Will Bedner and, and Christian McLeod. They just looked completely in control and, and, and really comfortable. You know, from from your seat there in the dugout, you know, how smooth did they look to you? And, and is that the kind of performance? You know, they haven't been able to string together back to backs like that. Do you feel good about them going into the tournament and going into the postseason? I do. I mean, I, I think they're learning. I mean, these kids are still. And they're first year SEC starters and they're learning a lot during this year and it's um it's tough. I mean and, and they've had some tough, you know, starts in the year, but they've had a bunch of great ones too and I just think their learning curve, they're still progressing and moving forward and um, you know, I'm excited to see them this week. Looking at this week ahead, I know you said earlier in your press conference you had not made a decision for Wednesday as far as who the starting pitcher is going to be. But looking beyond that, at Thursday and Friday, what what's the plan there? You know, with McLeod, with Bedner, or, or you know, it could be Saturday, I guess, for Will if he stay in the winners bracket. Do you have a, a plan on how to manage those guys? I can't imagine you're looking to throw them a hundred plus pitches. No, I mean we'll use them like we've used them all year. You know, if they're in regular rest, I mean we'll use them. Um, up to about 100 pitches is kind of where we've been all year long. And um, you get an extra day's rest probably going to the next week, so they'd be ready for a regional. Um, but we're not going to we're not gonna over-pitch somebody this week and jeopardize the following week. So, you know, we know we'd like to keep our starters in the right spots and our bullpen guys in the right spots and, and um, you know, kind of go from there. But I, you won't see us bringing a guy back or doing something crazy trying to trying to get an extra win there if, if it's going to affect the next weekend. How does your team feel about morning baseball? Because I'll tell, tell you, as a member of the media, I'm thrilled about it. Yeah, well, you know, I'm thrilled about it because I, like um, I don't like the nighttime, two in the mornings. And, I, you know, <laughs> even when we went to me Arlington, every, a lot of our fans got on me because we took the morning slot because I like getting up every day, knowing what time we played. We got a BP on the field. We got to do everything. And, we talked about that about the team today. That's what, one of the reasons we do it because of tournament baseball. But totally off the subject, my kids, they just felt like um, I told them we'd have to eat breakfast at 6.15 in uniform. And Tanner Allen told them, that's usually when we already got our ducks by that point, Coach. So I got all these guys to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're not they're not scared of early morning because they go hunting all the time. So when you get these, uh, <laughs> that was their concept. And then they'll come back and sleep the whole afternoon is probably what they'll do. But um, we're just – we're fired up to be playing and being in a good spot. and uh, I like the morning game, too, though, better than the night game, even though the night game has big-time crowd. So, Yeah. Well, one of my fellow beat writers said it best, as even if we do play a 17-inning game again, we'll be home by 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So it's, no, oh, it's not really that big don't. a deal. <laughs> don't, don't do it again. No, coach, no, coach, no coach going into tournament baseball wants that. So it's, uh, it's hard, to, hard to even manage the team after that point. So it was. Uh, yeah. I'm glad we won it, but I, let's, let's hope for nine every game. We talked last week, and, and Rowdy Jordan brought it up after the Missouri series that he felt like the, the team had just sort of come in with the attitude of they were going to show up and win, and it didn't happen. Do you feel like your team shook off all of that 
this week? You, did you feel like mentally your team was where you wanted them to be? I did. I, I thought our team was mentally where they wanted to be. I, I'll be honest with you. I thought they were mentally where they're supposed to be the week before. And you know, when you lose to the higher place team, lose to the lower team, it's always that we overlook them. It just we made a couple of mistakes in the second game of that Missouri series. Should have won that game, and they beat us on Saturday or, or whatever day, the third game. You know, I don't. You know, sometimes you can't explain baseball, and we just got manhandled that day, and probably because we give them confidence the day before, but. Um, the reality is, is, you know, we, this team's pretty consistent. They come pretty much, you know, that we had that first week of the year with Arkansas. That was a, a tough one, but even the Vanderbilt series, man, we go there, we split, get one from lighter and man, we're playing a great game on Sunday and just, you know, we give up the bomb, but, um, they've, they've brought a consistent effort all year long. And, and, um, I know that's, you know, I, I just like where they're at right now, but they, I, I kind of had a great feeling they would respond the way they did. They just always seem to do that. You got a new face in the lineup these past few weekends, and in, in Kellum Clark, the big freshman. That's a guy that you know preseason people like me were talking about could be a an impact player for you. It's taken him a while to get there, but you have to be pleased with what you're seeing out of him. We are. I mean, he's had some you know things he's had to fight off the field. So it's you know getting him in the lineup, getting him healthy, getting him going, and then you know, it's just being an SEC player. I mean, it's just not easy. So it's you know, and and he's done a lot of work. Him and Coach Gotro of, of you know fine tuning that swing and. He's a lot of talent. I mean, there's a lot of talent there, and now we're starting to get the production out of him. So Hoover, Alabama, obviously this will be your second SEC tournament. Didn't get to have one last year. You said earlier today that you're going over there to win the tournament. And then, you know, no coach is going to say, well, we're going over there just to get done as quickly as we can. You want to keep a winning mentality. How do the players, you know, feel about the SEC tournament? Are they excited to be there, especially after not having one last year? Well, they love it. I mean, they're excited. I mean, they get, you know, most of these kids are friends. You know, they play summer ball. They play high school yeah. ball. They, so they, they get to see all their buddies. They get to play. You get to be on a big stage. I mean, it's – and the SEC, they do it right. And, you know, it's funny. Like, last year I really wasn't excited for it as as, as I am this year because we were, you know, we were the – I think we were the four national seed. And no matter what we did there, we were still going to be a national seed. And, and, you know, and I got caught up in all that. And, and the reality is, is like I told the guys today, I mean, shoot, we might as well – we're not going to win it. Why go? You know, like yeah. – I mean, let's jump out there and play and do everything that we can. Coach, we're going to be out there all week uh, next week uh, in Hoover. Uh, we'll be at the, out there in the RV parking lot. I'm cooking at least one day, so you, I, right. I'm going to give you uh, you guys an open invitation. Anybody wants to show up, don't show up when Richard's cooking because I can't vouch for the quality of that food. All right. But when I'm when I'm behind the grill, I want you guys <laughs> out there come grab something to eat. All right, let us know, man. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, great, coach.